I noticed the popular argument about our Canadian election outcome seems to be focused upon the word establishment, so I decided to render a little diagram that will illustrate what Canadians just did in our election in relation to our establishment. Years ago, we had the three main political parties all within the big grey circle that I've referred to as the old establishment, with each party differing in their policies but still all within that big circle with the media controlling mostly what the people hear and learn about while still concealing the reality of corruption that's actually going on behind the scenes. But then we saw the development of a new agenda and lineage of social justice warrior that has gelled into a new establishment that is still within the old, but now we see that the individual is being directly censored and all the main political parties have chosen to stay within the confines of that circle, likewise with our educational institutions. As a consequence, we've also seen that anyone deciding not to huddle inside that circle gets penalized with slander and exile. Laugh all you want, but Maxine Bernier made a conscientious effort to remain outside that circle once he realized how preposterous it was becoming, even though he knew he would be targeted and ostracized. However, he still does sit within that big circle of the old establishment because he pretends he doesn't know what the deep state is. Like Trump, he knows it's delicate territory. Speaking of which, if you add Trump to the diagram, he would be orbiting around the outer circle, kind of situated half in and half out, because he's the only leader right now, to my knowledge, that publicly acknowledges the existence of the deep state. But as I noted in previous videos, Trump knows he can't just tweet out to the world. The Central Intelligence Agency is trying to overthrow me because they are nothing but gun-running, drug-dealing thugs disrupting countries and stealing resources for other failing thugs like Crooked Hillary and loser Nancy Pelosi to share in the spoils while poisoning the neighborhood. He knows if he tweets that puppy out, in short order the economy would begin to twitch and flail in convulsions. He's trying to do something that can only be carefully done. So what matters the most at this point is recognizing that any party that falls within that inner circle is mounting a direct frontal attack against free speech and therefore a direct adversary to the core stability of this country. And I marvel at some of the comments I see throughout YouTube saying how the people that voted for Bernier are sheep that will believe anything. Or it was just a big money scam to sucker people, follow the money. Or I wouldn't vote for someone that left classified documents at his girlfriend's house. On and on it goes. Too many fucking people are failing to connect the incidents like the classified documents delinquency to the big circle. Blunders like that are usually done intentionally as distractions or to provide an excuse for the leaks. Bernier's father was in politics, so Maxime is no stranger to what's really going on and knows how easily people are tossed aside or turfed or compromised as a means to keep those gears behind the curtain turning as quietly as possible. Simply because what's going on behind the curtain is all about leaks. It's all about leaks and scams and compromise and blackmail and money laundering. If you want to follow the money, just look at the F-35 scandal that Stephen Harper and Peter McKay and Rana Ambrose dazzled the taxpayers with. Nothing but a big scam to get the taxpayers to pay for the research and development for all the flight systems and gadgets throughout the aircraft. Then they secretly sell slash leak many of the engineering secrets to someone like the Chinese so they can knock off a very similar jet like the J-20 and then all the gadgets that the taxpayers research and development paid for can be marketed in China or with whoever else wants to build a knockoff jet or get in on the game of stealing secrets and reverse engineering. It's all part of the big grey circle that when all is said and done is about money, weapons, oil, uranium and drugs. In its lowest common denominator it's guns for drugs. And it's guns for drugs because the guns are traded for drugs and the guns are used by gangs to seize territory and pillage assets and resources. And everything else that's going on is a theatrical screenplay to distract everyone from that. I don't know how many times I've pounded that point home in videos and provided reliable avenues that prove it to be true. And what truly escapes me is that for some reason people still don't seem to want to believe it and dismiss it from their minds. And it's a little perplexing to me to see people disregarding the information that we should be trying to push to the forefront of public awareness and instead preoccupied with nitpicking about all the things that are intentionally dangled out there as glittery distractions for you to be preoccupied with and nitpick about. And in the meantime, you somehow thought it would help to vote against free speech. Brilliant. You will never be able to fight the big circle, never mind beat it if you are now trapped within that smaller circle, because that's your voice. 
It's always triumphantly said, The pen is mightier than the sword. Well, if you forbid the pen by voting for its exile, then all that's left is the sword. And it's alarming that so many people are doing it to themselves. I've never seen so much self-censorship. Let's just examine one of many similar exchanges of comments I see about free speech. This one is from the Twitter feed of that snake, Andrew Shear. Observe how Kane the Just is not only perfectly happy to be in a passive stance on the subject, he lectures with pretentious contempt towards those who don't choose to be mutual with his passive stance. He says, Canada doesn't have freedom of speech, we have freedom of expression. Probably want to learn the difference. Oh goodness me, how could one be so naive as to not know the difference? Duly noted. Little does it occur to him that his position is basically this. Don't be so silly. The divine Justin Trudeau, his lordly excellency, hasn't granted us permission of full freedom of speech. Just a partial freedom of expression sort of thing. If anyone needs to learn the difference between something, I'd say Cain the Just should probably learn the difference between voluntary slavery and slavery of malcontent. Nonetheless, I would have to agree with Mr. Davison's position of contention that it's not his fault if Mr. Cain the Just can't interpret freedom of expression as meaning the freedom to speak freely. Although Mr. Davison could have also ushered Cain the Just to the Canadian Bill of Rights of 1960, where it is actually cited as freedom of speech. However, if it were myself responding improper to Cain the Just, I would decidedly say we don't have the freedom to express ourselves or freedom of speech because the Bill of Rights or Charter grants us the right. Everyone has the right to exercise freedom of speech simply because they do. It's self-evident, because you don't need anyone's damn permission. And again, any documentation citing the right in question is to serve as a protection of it, not acting as a powerful hand that grants it as a privilege. And should someone fancy himself to be that powerful hand that envisions revoking the irrevocable freedoms in question by force, the Americans installed the Second Amendment that serves as a protection of the right to defend yourself. Again, by virtue of the same principle as the freedom of speech, the Second Amendment serves as a protection of an existing self-evident right. It's an axiomatic right, not a permission or privilege granted. Today, this distinction is being missed completely, and the rational and objective principles that the Founding Fathers intellectually and painstakingly drafted are being ridiculed and mocked as a racist gun culture that wants a license for hate speech. And the level of raw ignorance is really revealing when you see so many comments written as a self-censored sneer like this. We only have freedom of expression here. It's only done in the racist white supremacist America that they provide a license for hate speech. Off our streets, Nazi scum. It's so sad to see the contempt mixed with the ignorance. Corrupt governments and leaders, on the other hand, treasure the passive-aggressive stance that people like Cain the Just take because it shows the ignorance of people and the willingness of people to be controlled and told what to do. The willingness of people to aggressively censor themselves. In turn, that furnishes the government with a legion of puppets that are willing to censor themselves and, fueled by their own self-loathing because of their own lack of conviction, feel empowered to aggressively shout down and censor everyone else. People say that free speech isn't being suppressed. Sure it is, right there, it's self-inflicted. The powers that be are smiling with sinister delight and saying, We don't need to conquer these people. These people will conquer themselves. And people who will conquer themselves deserve to be conquered. And here I'll flash back to this quote I used in my previous video. People like Cain the Just don't grasp the significance and importance of the framework of this quote. He sees it backwards, the same plastic framework of thinking as Trudeau. Justin Trudeau has always loved to speak of the Canadian Charter of Rights with an arrogant flourish, as if it beholds the token privileges that his hereditary liberal government granted to the lowly subjects of the country. And to this day, he still sees fundamental freedoms as some benevolent gift from the government that they can pull the reins in on at any time. You know he thinks that way, otherwise we wouldn't have crap like M103 and the hideous reports that go with it. And now our entire seated government thinks like this and has formed one giant alliance that is openly hostile to free speech. Just the title of this report exemplifies how convoluted society has now become. Firstly, it shows how religion is coming back to bite you, but not because history repeats itself, but because when you pander to it in totality while strategically immobilized in philosophy, it has a way of boxing you in like this. 
society was pretty much philosophically handcuffed a long time ago because most people have been trained to ridicule the very idea of taking the word philosophy seriously. Go figure. Secondly, it shows how words are getting bundled together that shouldn't be. Namely, you can't analyze race and religion consolidated like that. You can't make religion immune to criticism. They use the word discrimination to evoke the word persecution with flickering candles and dungeons. My criticism of religion is quite harsh, but it isn't persecution. As far as I'm concerned, though, teaching children religion is persecution. Thirdly, we see how Islam, as usual, is favored with its own special platform in the situation here. Ah, yes, lest we forget, it's not just a religion, it's an entire political ideological system. But then, shouldn't we add fascism phobia or communism phobia in there? They're political ideologies, too. They can just say there's a sprinkle of faith in there, giving it grounds to demand that you have to now bow to it and respect it no matter what. See how stupid this is getting? You people are boxing yourselves in because you don't want to say anything offending religion as a whole, and then you wonder why you find yourself trying to squirm your way through explaining the existence of something so ridiculous as this. This is the return of the Grand Inquisition, and it's scary to see some of the details and things like this and how they want to start engendering new classifications like hate incidents. They want to rally their own little hate incident squad, yet at the same time it's become pretty clear that slander and libel have now become the acceptable and fashionable devices to destroy one's opponents. And that would be anyone that isn't marching in beat with the new establishment. So this idea of people wondering what makes me think Bernier is not part of the establishment is a non sequitur response to my standpoint that Bernier was our only option to vote for, because the priority at hand was to anchor free speech in its rightful place in our societal establishment. With its rightful place being first, did you people think free speech was optional to be placed somewhere down the line after we discuss if the dairy farmers and fucking trade unions are satisfied? Voting for Bernier wasn't going to divorce him from the overall establishment, but voting for any of the others was voting for a completely suicidal version of the establishment that wants to suffocate free speech. Yet I'm deemed as being among sheep that will believe anything. Well, I do believe that when I went to the polling station, PPC was on the ballot. It wasn't make-believe. How long it remained real once it disappeared into the box is another story as we can't even exclude the possibility of ballot tampering because they monkeyed with everything else. But I suppose that's a silly notion because it seems the only conspiracy you people think can exist is that of Bernier acting as a double agent to help Trudeau or it was his malicious spite because he lost the leadership election. So, if Bernier was merely pixie dust and just wanted to grab some cash and dash or was just part of a big insurgence to split the vote, then why didn't all of you force his hand, foil his big master plan, call his bluff, vote for him and force him into the house, make him stick around and prove himself worthy? Would that not have been strategic voting? Gee, not to mention you would have been voting for freedom of speech, not against it. So the burden of reason is on you people that think I am among sheep. Provide me a reason why you would vote for anyone that is clearly within that inner circle that is working towards making it practically impossible to fight the big circle. Please tell me, enlighten me with your profound wisdom on what could possibly compel you to do that. There was no this or that choice in that election. You don't need to be a seasoned political strategist to realize that. We needed to simply align with the only party with a leader delivering a platform that was at least staying outside the inner sphere of this mess that has now just become an even goopier, stickier mess. It was refreshing to see Bernier publicly denouncing the United Nations and publicly stating that our money should not be going to African dictators to furnish their perks. It was refreshing enough to think that he may even gravitate further to the outside where Trump sits. With that in mind, you also have to consider that the establishment was pushing back hard at Bernier, just as they do to Trump, because they do present a resistance to the new establishment agenda. Saying Trump is completely part of the landscape of the establishment is a flimsy argument when we see the establishment despises him and is currently trying to dispose of him. Along that same line of thinking, the people pushing hardest against Trump are obvious red flags. Like Exhibit A here. 
at the leaders' debate, this Jughead Singh clown wasn't 20 seconds in with his words when he mentioned Trump and the courage to stand up to him. But that's the funny part, though, isn't it, you miserable clown? And you know it. It doesn't take any courage to slander Trump because that's what the deep state affinity wants you to do. Nobody is coming to get you if you're out there publicly trashing Trump and spouting off that he should be impeached. But you know damn well Trump has done nothing to be impeached, but you're willing to help them with their dirty work in doing it. Where's the hate incident squad now? This is the guy that thinks he's the leading authority on who's hateful. I would have to say that trying to help the impeachment of someone for crimes that he did not commit, and in fact are largely the crimes of the witch he beat in the 2016 election, is way beyond a hateful incident. False impeachment is serious business. Counselor, you're such a dirtbag. And telling Bernier that he shouldn't even be on the debate stage and calling him a racist for things that have nothing to do with the race is certainly a very hateful incident. Quick, call the hate squad. And treating certain reporters like Nazis that aren't Nazis in any way, shape or form is another hateful incident. This one-man freak show has become more toxic than Trudeau. The hotshot lawyer with slick suits and flashy cars and ritzy watches and six bicycles. Yes sir, have to make sure we own six bicycles. I guess that somehow proves he's one with the environment. And after all, he's not one of those rich guys he wants you to hate. He's full of love and he loves everyone. It makes you want to barf it so ill-natured. But not enough time here to tear into this clown in full because I wanted to keep this video somewhat brief. But he'll be forthcoming for sure as I can now begin to turn my attention back to the next story behind the story. You can tell Jughead is among those most worried about their glass house of cards crashing. Scum like this depend on the ignorant. They prey on the ignorant. Remove the ignorance and they fall. I don't normally like to use a lot of quotes. I prefer the fun of putting things in my own words. But since I focused on some quotes recently, I will close with a quote that is commonly attributed with Hitler, although there is no written archive to prove it. But it is said that he once remarked, how fortunate for governments that the people they administer don't think.